Okay, I just have ordered this box completely full with goodies, including this uh, Latte Panda. I'm going to use this to make an awesome print server, which is beyond a Raspberry Pi 3. Hi, I'm John for Proper Printing and this is already the third video of this video series in which I'm going to upgrade Ananda 3 Pro. In this video I'm going to show how I add a Letty Panda to this printer and make a print, print server out of it. I've already uh, connected this uh, Letty Panda to the printer, well actually to the power supply. The power supply is connected to this DC-DC converter and a DC-DC converter is connected to the gravity shield and the gravity shield is connected to the Letty Panda. I've installed Octoprint and now um, that's where I'm at. The Letty Panda is a, has a standard 64-bit CPU, Intel has CPU, so it's just like an ordinary computer. It comes with a Arduino coprocessor. Well, this gravity shield, this um, enables for all kinds of gravity hardware. So I have some, uh, some relays here and some a current measurement device, some LEDs. So I have some stuff to play with. Uh, you can even uh, use an alcohol uh, sensor so you can uh, check um, how much alcohol you've drunk. So you can check if you're still capable of uh, running a, uh, a 3D printer. My idea with this gravity shield and the Arduino is to uh, for example, I'll do more things like uh, enabling and disabling the power of the uh, of the printer. Okay, there has been a minor setback. This is the DC DC converter, and I had everything connected to my printer, and it turns out that this capacitor has broken off, and I'm not able to find it somewhere. So my guess is that it has broken off at the factory. I'm going to order that capacitor and then I can move on. Okay, I'm not giving up that easily. I have uh, found a through hole capacitor with a similar voltage, a bit smaller capacitance, but hopefully this will work so I don't have to wait for another capacitor to arrive. So I have um, yeah, connected the printer through USB to this Letty Panda. Hopefully if I turn this thing on, then the DC-DC converter will not make this noise and get this hot. And hopefully this, that capacitor won't blow up. So let's see what happens. It looks like we're back to business. Okay, getting Windows ready. Do not turn off your computer. Oh, yeah, it's of course the updates. I'm going to disconnect that fan. First thing I did was installing Firefox. Hmm, that thing is getting hot. Yeah, it's uh, at 100 degrees, so I'm going to turn this thing off. Yep, that thing is... Uh, is fried. I have to line it out better. Yeah. Is the, uh, the converter itself is getting very hot. Okay, the amount of luck I'm having right now is incredible. <laughs> I have found this. I have no idea where this came from, but the output is 12 volt. This DC connector <laughs> fits directly into this shield. I can continue. <laughs> oh, stupid DC DC converter. I have. Uh, set up octoprint on windows using this using this tutorial and i have already made a, uh, a shortcut so if i open that one then it will start octoprint and i think i'm going to just add this to the startup folder and in the meantime i can connect the printer through usb i have all the com ports here com3 is the um, uh, the arduino and com6 that's the printer then i can go to the web browser. Yes. And here we have Octoprint. 
Nice. I'm going to restart that server. I think I fried my power supply. Okay, I think I found the cause of the smell. That capacitor you see over there, it is a bit burnt and the smell is coming from there. Fortunately, not from my main board. One fortunate thing is that I have my follow-up screen right here, but it's still a bit weird. But yeah, I fortunately can just continue uh, without that screen. Now I have this printer running. I started Octoprint. See if I can connect and what it shows. Ah, it shows the temperatures. Nice. I think I should now be able to go to control and home the X and Y. Nice. The next step would be making the print monitor and see if I can get that to connect through this Octoprint API. And hopefully the uh, Arduino would be able to pick up the messages from the printer. So I can use this gravity shield to control the printer. So far so good. It's uh, going pretty well. I just have um, burned up a DC DC converter and my display. So it's... Uh, where's that microphone? Quick heads up. I've tried to make that, that uh, Python script working. But I didn't manage to get it working in the way I wanted to. I managed to, to make some sort of connection with the uh, Octoprint and uh, with Arduino but the problem of uh, well the PSU control I wasn't able to install that because the PSU control it relies on uh, on a Raspberry Pi and I have a letter panda so I've, I got a little frustrated and um, I've designed my own application here's the relay connected directly to that to the gravity board and now if I press this button here, then it will enable the relay and that relay is directly connected. So I can just press that button, the relay switches and I can use this relay to switch the printer. And I have made, hopefully it's, uh, you can see this a bit. It's a, a simple touch, touch screen uh, interface, but if I press, for example, uh, yeah, I can go to here and say go 100 millimeter, oh, like that. And now if I go to up, then the Z, the Z moves upwards. And another neat thing is that if I press here, then I can see the, the charts of the the actual temperature. This was definitely not my intention, but I uh, woke up this morning way too early and the first thing I did was uh, trying to write some code to make this work. And now I'm going to place everything in the printer. So it's, yeah, I, I now know that the hardware works. So now I can give everything a place. I thought I had nailed this design, but um, there is one minor setback. Is that these wires, these flat cables of the screen are uh, a bit too short. So I'm now... I have to redesign the whole thing. Why is this table reflective? Now I can see myself and see my own defeat. Okay, I've made a redesign of the enclosure for this Latipenda. I have moved the Latipenda a bit more to the left 
and a bit further to the front. So according to my calculations, <laughs> with this new design, the display would fit, should fit. Oh, it fits. Nice. Okay, I'm just going to plug in this uh, power to see if I have the, if I have um, screwed up the Letty Panda or not. Okay. I'm just starting up Windows <laughs> on my printer. Configure serial port. Yes, it's not working because the printer isn't connected. Well, if I go to here, then this is switching the relay. <laughs> Okay, I just have added these feet. This, uh, these feet are uh, needed for this fan here. So there is a bit more clearance between the bottom of the printer and this fan. It's also beneficial for this uh, outlet of this power supply. I have printed some holders for these, uh, for these modules. Now I can just add a module to this uh, standard profile. And I have made a holder for this adapter. I've now connected everything electronically. I've added the relay, this uh, adapter, the USB cable. I've added the feed. So I can uh, flip the printer. In theory, if I switch on the power supply, then the Letty Panda will, will start up. Letty Panda. -y. Touch screen ain't working anymore. For a second, I thought I destroyed the touchscreen, <sighs> but um, the cable itself was uh, yeah had sprung loose a bit. Uh, let's start 3D printer controller, and uh, now it's uh, the moment of truth. So if I go to here, then I should be able to enable the printer. Yes, okay, I have to change the pin mode of the output, sorry, of the digital pins, so it knows that it's an output. By the way, I use Bitlash, it's an open source Arduino library in which you can um, control the whole Arduino through the terminal. Yeah, you can use um, scripting language, you can set and get variables. It's a bit overkill for this application because I just use it to uh, enable and disable pins. But it's pretty easy to, to do that and make a library in LabVIEW to control the Arduino through the terminal. Now it's the real moment of truth. If I press that button, the printer should go on. And it does. <laughs> oh man! Home! Yes! Now I can modify the software in such a way that when it finishes the print, then the, the printer will uh, go off automatically.
I'm not so good at programming in Python or C Sharp. I'm a LabVIEW programmer, so I have used LabVIEW for this application. The code itself, it's very rough. Yeah, I've used uh, the cute message handler template, but yeah, the code itself, it's a mess. <laughs> I have made it very quickly and um, yeah, these are all the messages. So I can uh, I'll do a jog and then it goes from, uh, well, you can see here X plus or minus or Y or Z. So if I run this VI, it's all the way up to that upper left corner because this is the actual resolu resolution of that screen so this is full screen and i can uh, go through all the tabs here and uh, this is the future feature these are the settings and um yeah i can use these buttons to uh, to jog but if i do that then it will probably crash because i haven't uh, connected the printer to it and i uh, didn't do much with uh, error handling so i can just click here and then it will say Oh, it's an uh, invalid object and it stops. So it's a very rough and simple uh, user interface. But the nice uh, thing about this is that I'm now able to do whatever I want. If I add a laser to it, then you don't have to use the fan on and off commands to uh, enable and disable the laser. I can just make a user interface targeted towards that laser. So and for every tool, I can make tool specific user interfaces. In theory, it should be possible to capture the position of the mouse within this pane. So I have uh, something that I would like to try. For now, if you made it all the way to here, I thank you a lot for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed this video. It went a bit different than I uh, than I intended. Uh, yeah, of course it was my intention to add a Letty Panda to the printer and control it with uh, using Relay. Yeah, for me it was the easiest way to just design my own application. The nice thing is that now I have an Arduino and Windows and LabVIEW, so the possibilities are basically endless. Still, I'm not done with that printer. And uh, well, the next, oh, the next step is. <laughs> now I'm going to do that. That last thing in LabVIEW that I think is it's pretty neat if that works. I have changed this. It was the camera settings, but now it's uh, the pointer. And now I can control the printer. <laughs> I don't know what the use of this could be, that you can use the touch screen to um, get your printer somewhere, but I think it's, uh, it's pretty cool that this sort of works. <laughs> I'm very afraid that it will crash. So if you know something else which, is, which can be very cool to implement, then uh, leave a comment. I'm going to improve the software further so I can learn more about uh, how this uh, 3D printer works. Again, see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.